So water hammer, just a couple of things here. Um, again, with the breadth review, you should be familiar with what water hammer is and some uh, devices, strategies to prevent water hammer damage. Um, for the depth exam, just need to know a little bit more about it and possibly um, have to, you know, we might be asked to um, um, either calculate uh, a time that it takes for water hammer to make a round trip or calculate the pressure increase caused by water hammer. So quick review, what is it? Sudden starting or stopping of flow can result in a shock wave. It's a pressure shock wave. Uh, which is called water hammer. So, for example, when you know when you uh, open up, you know, open up a valve and let water flow through the system, you suddenly close it. What happens to all of that kinetic energy when you suddenly close the valve, and and water stops? You stop flow, right? What happens to all that kinetic energy? It has to convert to pressure energy, right? It doesn't, you know, it doesn't suddenly dissipate in thin air. Um, it's suddenly converted into uh, pressure energy, and it sends a shock wave back through the system. The process is really quick. What happens is that shock wave gets sent back to the source, so from the valve back to the source, and then back to the valve, back to the source. It goes back and forth until the friction losses in the pipe dampen it, dampen those pressure waves. Um, and most of us have. Um, Probably all of us have heard or experienced water hammer at some time or another in our lifetime. We just may have not realized that's what it is. And, you know, anytime you open a valve or close it and you hear shaking, um, you know, or thumping uh, behind the wall, uh, or any type of vi vibration, when when you do that, uh, that's that's water hammer. Um, we care about water hammer not just because it can sound annoying, but because it can create significant damage if, if we don't protect against it. Um, pressure increase above static pressure can damage pipe supports and connections. So let's say the normal pressure on our water line is 60 PSI or 80 PSI, and um, maybe the water hammer, depending on the flow and the size of the pipe, um, ends up being like 260 PSI. That's certainly possible. Pipes are rated for a certain amount of pressure, basically like a burst pressure. And if the if the static pressure in the system gets above that, pipe could burst. Um, normal operating pressures are usually much, much lower than that burst pressure. But the water hammer can really skyrocket it, and that's when we can have um, burst. Um, the magnitude of that water hammer shock is affected by the initial static pressure in the system, the change in velocity, if we have really high velocities and then suddenly close the valve. Um, the valve operating time, how long it takes to close, instantaneous versus slow. Um, speed of the pressure wave, water density, elasticity, and the pipe thickness, diameter, and elasticity. So all of those things affect it and are used in real life equations to solve for water hammer magnitude and pressure increases. Um, on the exam, we don't need all of those things. We're not going to be using uh, the pipe thick, pipe wall thickness, diameter, uh, pipe and water elasticity to solve any problems. That's well beyond the scope of the PE exam. And also, before we take a look at the equations, Pressure wave velocity is approximately equal to um, sound wave velocity.